Welcome back, folks, to part three of CIOs and Bowties. My guest today is Les McQueran from Alpine Capital Advisors, uh, a private placement company in the um, institutional space, but um, just uh, really sits on top of a huge treasure trove of data as far as GPs, LPs, secondaries, uh, sp specifically the private equity markets, but all alternatives uh, is, is all alternative asset classes they're touching and put out a great uh, newsletter, which you can subscribe to. I'll put the link below this, uh, this podcast. So, so Les, again, thanks for hanging with us. You touched on this a bit earlier about this, this concept now of remote diligence and sourcing. One of the stats I thought was interesting was, um, will you invest in, an, so this was a question to the LPs, will you invest in a new manager if you've never met in person? 29.6% said yes, if this work from home um, trend or, you know, if we have to continue working from home for greater than three months. So, so that's interesting to me. I mean, have you actually seen now allocators, you know, write million dollar checks to managers they've never seen in person? So the answer to that is yes, but not a lot. Hmm. Um, and I think it all depends. Um, and unfortunately, I think the big guys, the guys that don't, don't, don't necessarily need the money as much as an emerging manager, um, and if, if any emerging manager are listening to this, you may, uh, may want to you know, turn this down because you'll probably punch your, uh, punch your, your device. <laughs> but, 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 but as you know, right, the, if, if you're investing in a new Blackstone fund or Carlisle fund, um, you know, they have so many investors and, you know, they, they're a big brand, a public company. It's obviously much easier to do that. Um, even, even if you're not an existing investor, right? The, the, the warm blanket of buying the market is, is something that, that is, that's hard to beat. And obviously those firms have worked, um, you know, over 30 years on building that brand and building that LP base. What, what's hard to do are, are new managers, emerging managers, emerging strategies, and so where we've really seen these things have predominantly been with larger type managers. Now, now we have seen it with what I would call more managers or, or so allocators that have um, can reference very, very well. So almost like if you think of an allocator, like a um, almost like an intelligence analyst going deep uh, into the, uh, in, 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 into the employment history or the reference reference list going 13 layers deep. Um, and we know of one manager, not, not a big manager, but sort of sub $500 million manager who is doing their first, who's going through right now their first fully remote process from first meeting to funding. And um, that's interesting, you know, the, 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 the risk that you have as an allocator, right, especially if, you're, if you answer to a large institution, is that if this doesn't go well or if it right. goes terribly, you know, you, you will always have someone say, well, why didn't you just wait a few months or even a year, you know, because mm -hmm. everyone will focus on the mistakes more than the successes. Yeah. So I don't see it a lot. I see the longer, long, the longer, the longer this, the, the, the COVID crisis lasts, I think you'll see more of it. But generally speaking, um, it, it's, it's not a lot. It doesn't happen a lot. Okay. Okay. So um, I get it. So you can do the remote. I mean, most due diligence can be handled remotely with the DDQs and the like. And how about sourcing? How have you seen some of the allocators go about sourcing then? Um, you know, as you could, you're just, they're just hit up with so many different managers all the time. I mean, how does, how do you do that remotely? Yeah, I, I, you know, sourcing is easier, right, than, than wiring, <laughs> signing a doc and wiring <laughs> and committing, committing legal to a fund. And, and there, I think, um, it's, it's a mixed bag. There, there are people, there's some LPs of mine that have, that have a complete moratorium on, on uh, new managers. And, and because it's all hands on deck, let's really get to know the stuff that we have in our portfolio. If we want to do something, let's do it with our existing manager. And, of course, that makes a lot of sense, right? Right, right, um, yeah. What we see on the sourcing side, so if, if I say, if I, if, if, I could, if I could say what's the number one activity that I see LPs doing right now is that they're asking themselves, maybe this is a good time to get into that hard to access or 
or a manager or get more capacity in that capacity constrained manager. So even more than engaging with new managers, they're calling up either managers they have relationships with and asking them to take more capital or managers that have said no to them for a long time. You know, probably Sequoia is a, like a great example of mm -hmm. this and saying, hey, listen, you know, you've said no to me for five, 10, 15 years. Is there an opportunity to start a relationship with you? We see a lot of that. You know, we see a lot of people seeing this as an opportunity to kind of get into those in, into those managers. Yeah. Um, but a way, but of course, there's very few of those managers, and most people, including the managers that I work with, are are managers that are looking for capital from new investors. And um, I do think that people are open minded to it, uh, open minded to meeting new managers. But they're pretty upfront if it's a possibility. It's even a possibility uh, that the funding happens even if they really like the strategy without meeting face to face. So people, right. some people are saying, hey, listen, we'll meet with you, we'll do all our work, we'll even approve you, but we will not fund you or sign mm -hmm. a document until the, mm -hmm. the, the quarantine travel restrictions are over and we can sit with you face to face or you can come to our office and meet yeah. face to face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing can replace the face to face interaction, right? Looking into the whites of, of the eyes, as, as we used to say. Um, now, you've done some really innovative things as far as communicating with your LP base and I guess GP base as well. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Berkshire Hathaway event, the Potluck Town Halls, the uh, AIR uh, Weekly. I don't know how often AIR comes out. It's a weekly, every bi-weekly. Um, what's next, Les? What, what other surprising, innovative, fascinating marketing avenue are you going to be taking? Well, I, I, I think... Um... The next thing that we're doing is this Asian event um, where we're going to have over 200 investors from all over the world, over 20 countries, um, some CIOs from very large allocators, and, and, and we hope some legendary investors uh, in, in, in honor of Asian Awareness Month and to, to, to support Asian charities. So um, that, that's what we're really looking forward to that. Um, I do something every every May uh, with 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 people in the business, and that's for everyone. You know, that's everyone who is interested in Asian markets or um, in support of diversity and inclusion. So that's one thing that we'll do. Uh, one thing that um, we're starting to uh, work on with a bunch of my friends, and and here I want to give a shout out to two people, Rahul Mudal and Ted Sides. If I don't, want, okay, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to uh, promote a competitor of yours, but he, he, he doesn't. No, no, Ted, um, I know Ted, he was at uh, Prelude, uh, not Prelude, um, Protégé, I beg your pardon, Protégé, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, we were invested and, 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 and he has a great, ago. yeah, he's a great, he has a great podcast that has lots of subscribers. That's right, yeah, yeah. They, they, they uh, they're doing a, uh, a, a great event that I'm excited to be involved with, um, uh, and it's called, um, I don't want to talk too much about it because my involvement is, uh, is, 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 is still in the background, but essentially they are putting LPs and GPs together um, for charity. So the fund managers will be paying uh, a certain amount of money to a charity. Uh, and, and, you know, these charities are, are food security related charities. Oh, right. Um, and, and LPs will attend to, to meet with those managers. So I think, um, you know, right. during this time, you know, if, 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 everyone's trying to do something to help uh, the current situation. And um, I'm excited to talk more about it right now. It's, it's, uh, it's embryonic, but, um, but I, but you'll hear more about it. Sure. No, that's great. That's a very noble, noble cause, obviously. And the Asia thing will be interesting. I, I assume that's virtual as well. I'm just looking at your upcoming series. That's virtual, right? The Asia. Yes. Yeah. Every, yeah. Un unfortunately, uh, every, everything is virtual right now. Um, <laughs> But but yeah, I, I I think that's 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 it. Uh, maybe one last thing is that um, we, we're also partnering with a um, uh, with a uh, a gentleman in Europe. His name's Professor Oliver Goschlag, um, in in many different ways. Um, he's probably the most followed professor in private equity. Maybe Josh Lerner from from Harvard Business School is uh, is also widely followed. And um, we're trying to uh, engage LPs and GPs more about how the use of data can be used uh, to provide analysis and education uh, yeah. on private equity. So it could be valuation, it could be pricing, it could be cash flows. So we're going to be working a lot with Oliver, uh, Professor Oliver, um, who um, and and uh, so look forward to more more uh, 
more market intel uh, in, in concert with him. Oh, and great. Yeah. Great. Lo- love, love the data. Um, okay. Last one is uh, on the, per- uh, I said I would leave a personal selfish question to the end. And so, um, again, way back when we first started talking on this podcast, I mentioned that you spent some time at uni- in the University of Cape Town. Um, you know, with all this going on, I'm faced with a situation with a, a senior at high school is now going to college and she has applied and actually been accepted for the uh, first year of broad program with FSU, Florida State University. So we're really excited about it because her location of choice is London, where I lived for a number of years and, you know, definitely would love her to kind of walk uh, in, in those, in, in my steps, not, not necessarily exactly the same way. Anyway, I know you study abroad was something that featured in your life. And I'm curious about how valuable that has been to you and, and the knowledge you've picked up over the years, just, you know, being abroad as much as you have and, you know, has that shaped you as, as an investor, as a person? Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly has. I mean, it, 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 hard to imagine an experience that has shaped me more than either my, uh, <laughs> the lessons I learned from my family or, or my, my travels from abroad. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think obviously meeting new cultures and seeing new places and, and, and new market opportunities um, is, is great, right? Because it's, it's a more interconnected world. Uh, we're sort of learning that, you know, right now, the, the sort of dark side of the in, interconnected mm-hmm. nature of globalization mm-hmm. and, it's, and, and how that could be not always a good thing. Um, but you know what, I, I, and, and this may sound a little more uh, America first, but I will tell you that um, we love um, opportunities around the world, but it, it always strikes me that we, we work with a lot of American managers and um, I always wonder, you know, what keeps America, you know, great from being an environment and, 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 a, and a marketplace to invest in. And when you see, and you go to as many places as, as I had, and I've been to a lot of emerging markets and like all through Europe, Europe you also have an appreciation of the uh, dynamism the the rule of law, you know, the mores, the ethics, the uh, respect of uh, of, of uh, uh, you know property in the case of you know whether it's real estate or distress strategies and 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 bankruptcy law, everything. I mean, you can na- probably name a thousand things that America offers to investors from all over the mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. and 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 that's why I think at the end of the day, you know, a lot of there's a lot of people that are you know very negative, um, you know, and far more successful, smarter people than myself, like Howard Marks and Paul Singer, you know, Ray Dalio, I think even Sam Zell, you know, who, who, who Stan Drucker Miller just yesterday, who are, or, 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 or negative on the world. I'm just a, I'm just a place manager, I'm a marketer, but my sense is that over the long term, there's just no place in the world like America to put capital to work. And, um, you know, from a opportunity set, from a risk adjusted perspective, from the security, of your capital for your ability to fight for your rights if something goes wrong. And that's not only to Americans, but that's to other places in the world. Exactly. So I would yeah. say that um, to kind of bring it back home is that- Don't go uh, abroad. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, we, there's, there's, great, there's great opportunities all over the world. But um, when, I, when I travel, I, I, I really have appreciation for the, um, for the market that we operate in. Um, and um, and I, I think that's probably- uh, unusual uh, takeaway that you probably didn't expect, but it's it's one that um, when 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 I look at it all, um, it's it's yeah. one where uh, I, I really appreciate. Now that's uh, well well said. I mean I, that that that's very well put, and I can concur. I mean there is no place like the U.S. in the world, and we have our problems. There's no doubt about it. But all said and done, you know this is where I would like to remain and and raise my family because the opportunity set is so so big, and the rest of the world realizes that. And, um, you know, it's a republic that hasn't had its uh, challenges, but I, I certainly believe we'll get through these as well. So, listen, Les, uh, always great insight. Appreciate the discussion. Appreciate the time. Um, I know it's been a little bit depressing probably up in New York of late, but, uh, you know, I hope and pray that things all get better for, for all you guys uh, up there and that we get back to business, the, um, the business of America's business, right? So I'm going to hand it over to you for any final words. And again, thanks for coming on board and uh, certainly appreciate it. And all the contact links uh, for Les will be put at the bottom of, of the podcast. So thanks again, Les, and final words from you. 
Yeah, no, no thank you, Greg, for this opportunity. Um, I look forward to engage with really anyone that wants to hear what we're hearing. Um, you know, we've, we, we pretty much embrace that this is going to be a, a, an okay to pretty bad year for fundraising. And so we've embraced this opportunity in time uh, to really engage with uh, both LPs and GPs. I think the last thing I will say is, you know, a little bit of a, you know, preview of upcoming attractions that my anticipation is that 2021 is going to probably be the most busy fundraising market in the history of mankind. Huh. As fundraisers in 2020 are being pushed back into the into uh -huh. 2021, and even some, you know, funds funds in 2022 are pulling forward their fundraisers because they don't want to take a risk that something like COVID will rear its ugly head again. So I think this is a great. The silver lining is that is that we could take some time, be thoughtful, be strategic, um, continue to talk to each other because 2021 is going to be a busy year. Great. Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, mate. All the best to you and your family. Thanks, Greg.